Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 44 and this is the second video in a sub video, a series of sub videos on the applications of quantum statistics. So I'm going to discuss the Planck distribution. Now I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com. So at this stage what I've done is all the theory required in order to understand this video. The in specific or specifically in the last video number 43 I showed how to transform from rectangular to spherical coordinates I'll be using that in this video in number 42 I discuss, discussed the density of states for a potential which is not periodic so in the previous videos on density of, density of states uh, I, videos 1 to 6 what I did was I assumed that the, period, the potential was periodic however this time I assumed the potential was not periodic and that our inner infinite potential well we had our potential zero inside and zero uh, in infinity outside and as a result the wave function had to go to zero at either of the boundaries that was our boundary condition so I'll discuss that here we'll be, we'll be using that also uh, video number 40 I derive the Bose-Einstein distribution function using the partition function and in video number 30 I did the same thing but this time I used the multiplicity function and finally in video number 36 I discussed how to get the average energy of a quantum linear harmonic oscillator and the point there was that we model photons and phonons as quantum linear harmonic oscillators so the point here is that it's the exact same procedure I'll be using in this video as I did in number 36 so if you don't understand some of the mathematics which I skip you need to go to video number 36 in order to understand that okay so let's go ahead so in video number 45 I'm going, it's, it's actually a video I've recorded a couple of years ago, but I'm going to in, include it into this series of videos. And I'm probably, it's, it's another way of looking at the Planck distribution. So if you want to get another viewpoint, look at that video also. Alright, so I'm going to move on from there. So in this one I'm building on the work I've been doing up to now. And, uh, oh by the way, the reason I want you to look at number 45 is because I also talk about the motivation behind the Planck distribution why it was important and how it, it motivates quantum mechanics or quantum physics. So in this particular video we're going to talk about the, the, the Planck distribution or we're going to try and derive the Planck distribution formula. So the first things first, we're talking about photons. We're trying to model the electromagnetic um, the we'll say the electromagnetic spectrum or we'll say electromagnetic energy. So we're talking about the quantized uh, energy levels. We call them particles, we call them photons and we say that the energy of our photon is Planck's constant multiplied by nu, which is the frequency of vibration of a photon. Notice, of course, we're talking about a linear harmonic oscillator here. So, photons are bosons. Now, what does that mean? Well, first it means that they have integer spin. Okay? They have integer spin. Now, it also means that there is no restriction on conservation of particles. De 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 or, we'll say dn is, is, um, is not zero, excuse me. Now why is that important? Well because the chemical potential is the parameter which we use in order to enforce the conservation of particles. So if there's no conservation of particles this implies that mu is equal to zero for photons. And I'm going to prove that or I suppose give a, a reasonably um, logical argument as to why that is the case. So photons are bosons with integer spin and the chemical potential for a photon is zero. In the previous videos, we showed that the distribution function for bosons is the Bose-Einstein distribution function of e to the epsilon minus mu times beta, and we have this factor of minus 1 here. Notice, of course, that, that beta is the thermodynamic beta 1 over kT. So this is the Bose-Einstein distribution function. So you might be saying to yourself, well, hold up a second, did I not say that mu is equal to 0? I'll discuss that in a moment. So as we, as, as we start at the moment, we know photons are bosons and they should obey this particular distribution function. So what I'm going to discuss now is the partition function for a single particle. So if we talk about a single particle, then the Bose-Einstein function reduces to the following, e to the epsilon times beta minus 1. Because if we're talking about a single particle, there's no, there's no need to have this chemical potential term. So we're really only talking about the Boltzmann factor, 1 over e to the epsilon times beta minus 1, essentially. Okay? So, like I did in video number 36, we're going to calculate the partition function 
which is the sum of the Boltzmann factors or the Gibbs factors. So in this case it's e to the minus beta epsilon, so band like that. Alright, so I'm going to let you do that yourself if you like, but you can look at video number 36. And what we found in video number 36 is that the partition function for this particular system turns out to be 1 over 1 minus e to the minus uh, h nu beta, where in this case of substitute epsilon is equal to h nu. Okay, this is the partition function for a, uh, we'll say all the energy levels for a single photon or a single oscillator. Next, in also in video number 36, we know that the average energy is equal to minus 1 over the partition function del del beta of the partition function. I'll let you do the differentiation because I've already done it in the past. And we'll find that the answer to this is h nu over e to the h nu beta minus 1 or in terms of our quantum of energy epsilon e to the beta epsilon minus 1. Okay, so we're seeing straight away some similarities. We have, except this time we've got this, for a single oscillator, the average energy is the single quantum of energy multiplied by the partition or the multiplied by the occupancy or distribution function. So, where do we go from here? Well, we, take, we assume or we take the jump that the Planck distribution is given by, f of v is given by 1 over e to the beta epsilon minus 1. That's the jump we make. So this is epsilon times f of epsilon. Okay? Now, uh, what's, what's next? How do we, how do we talk about the, the chemical potential here? Okay, so the chemical potential is, like I said, the quantity which we use to uh, take into account conservation of particles. All right? Or it's the amount of energy that a single particle adds to our system. So before we talk about the chemical potential, I just want to talk about why the Planck distribution is important. Because the Planck distribution is rectified the ultraviolet catastrophe. So the ultraviolet catastrophe was when if we plotted lambda versus the energy of a particle, we found that it went off up to infinity. Well, say theoretically. However, experimentally, it dropped down like this at higher energies or at, at uh, ultraviolet wavelengths. So we call it the ultraviolet catastrophe. Well, you might ask yourself, why did this happen? Well, the reason it happened is because classically our harmonic oscillator had a, an energy of nkt, but the number of oscillators was infinite, of course, so the energy turned out to be in infinite. And that's where we had this going off to infinity here. Of course, that's absolute nonsense. So, if we look at the Planck distribution, we find that at higher energy, so higher values of epsilon, this exponential is bigger and bigger. So the whole occupancy function gets smaller and smaller. So you could say that the higher wavelength uh, photons are suppressed. Okay, but what are higher wa at the well? The, what are the shorter wavelength photons? I suppose it, I sp I suppose it should say shorter. The shorter wavelength photons, of course, are UV. So the ultraviolet photons are, um, are, are suppressed more and more at higher frequencies. So they're suppressed exponentially, and that's observed in experiment. So that's why the Planck distribution function seems to work just fine, because it explains the ultraviolet catastrophe. So back to the chemical potential. So um, photons, if, well, I suppose a fact is that photons can be created or destroyed in any quantity. So the point here is that there is no restriction for photons on the number of particles dn, or the change of the number of particles dn. Okay, so this is this is strange because if we look at our the Planck function has this, but the Bose-Einstein distribution function has this. So this kind of implies that the chemical potential is zero. So is this correct? Now, we need to look at a small bit of thermodynamics. So you can look at my videos on thermodynamics if you like. Perhaps you've studied thermo yourself. 
But for equilibrium, the definition of equilibrium, we'll say at a particular um, at a, with we'll say particular uh, under a particular set of circumstances, the Helmholtz free energy is minimized. And I, like I said, you can look at my video on the Helmholtz free energy if you like. Now the Helmholtz free energy F is equal to uh, U minus T S. But the infinitesimal change in the Helmholtz free energy DF is minus the entropy times the change in temperature, minus the pressure times the change in volume, plus the chemical potential times the number of uh, the change in particles. So you want to minimize this. So now dn is un unconstrained for photons, and this, this term here is unconstrained for photons. So it can be as big or conversely as small as you like. So we can use that by saying del F, del N at constant temperature and velocity, uh, temperature and volume should be zero. Okay, in order to minimize the Helmholtz free energy. Well, the only way we can get this, because dN can be any number we like, the only way this, this constraint is satisfied is if the chemical potential for photons is equal to zero. And that's what we say. We say the chem that bosons, of, or excuse me, photons obey Bose-Einstein distribution. However, we say the chemical potential is zero for the uh, for photons. All right. So that's really all I've got to say about the Planck di the Planck distribution for the moment. In the next video, I'm going to sum over all modes and can calculate the total energy of a gas of photons. Okay. So and the energy density later on. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also click on universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.